Okay, so we are now at the final step and our tray is designed. If you come down here to where you have the slider bar, let's go ahead and hide the opposing so we can see the lo up lower only. And as we slide over, you can see all of the models moving. That doesn't really matter because we're not printing successive models. We just need this. This is the tray. And you can see that the way I designed the tray, the brackets just barely stick out. This should be more than enough adhesion for the tray or for the brackets themselves. Now, I want you to take, uh, pay close attention here. There's a space surrounding all of these brackets. That's the whole idea there is for passive fit, okay? Now, if you think that they're too loose, you do have an option to tighten that down. I'm gonna come up to Tools, Preferences, Orthodontics, and now we're gonna look for Bracket Tooth Spacer. So this is, um, or sorry, that's space from the tooth. Transfer Guide Offset, 0 0.2 millimeters. So that is the space that is defaulted in the software. I'm actually gonna argue that you could probably go down to 0, 0.0. Reason being is these trays are going to be a flexible material. If you're printing in a rigid material, like a surgical guide material, you're gonna need that space, okay? You're gonna put some um, wax, ortho wax in the tray, and then you're going to seat, seat the bracket that way. Um, but if you're gonna be using a flexible material, well, you want it to grip as intimately as possible. So I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna go ahead and go back, and I'm gonna have the software redesign it. I want you to see the difference, okay? All right. Okay, so let's go back. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and hit continue to export again. Okay, so we're back. Now let's take a look at how this tray looks now. And now you can see that the tray is much more intimate. Sorry, that quick phone call. But anyway, so you can see that it's much more intimate now. The undercuts are still removed, so you can still get the tray on and off, but it will really grip on it. And again, we're going to be printing with a very flexible material. It's not, you know, uh, unnecessarily um, uh, flimsy, but at the same time, it will give you pretty darn grip of these tray, of these brackets. Okay, so that's it for the actual tray. Now, um, it is. I do still want to go ahead and show you uh, adding a label to this. Okay, so I'm going to click on the test patient, and I'm just going to show the label. And you can put this pretty much wherever you want. Keep in mind how you're going to be printing. I print this at a, a bit of an angle, so this should work well. Okay, just make sure though, right now it thinks it wants to apply the label to the model because right here it says apply on model. So you wanna change it over to indirect bonding tray. Notice that the number disappears and now shows no number because it's just the tray itself. So we're going to click on apply. And it's all done. Notice I also use the engrave as opposed to the emboss. That's a preference. You can have it emboss um, where it sticks out. I like to have it engraved in there. Again, that's just something I do with my surgical guides, with my dental, my ortho models and whatnot. So, so that is it. We can now export our model. It will export all of the models and the tray itself. So it takes a while. Truth be told, you don't need any of the models. Maybe the first model as reference and perhaps the last one if you want to have a before and after to present to your patient what we're aiming for or for reference as you're moving along through treatment. But the in-between models will not be helpful to you because at no point will they actually work. And what I mean by that is you couldn't make a tray off of a future model because the way the teeth align are not necessarily going to be the way the software sets it up for orth for aligner movement. The, the sequence in which the teeth move and braces is going to be different. So I'm going to click on export. It's once again, it asks me, did you add a horizontal, just like in the aligner software, it's asking, do you add a print platform for horizontal printing? Do you want to um, add a model number? 
the models, we don't need a horizontal print platform for a tray. We do need to add a label, which we've already done it. Okay. So I'm going to say, yes, proceed to export. And I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to call this, well, IBT files. Okay. And it's going to take a little while to export because it's got to export all of those individual files. So go ahead and get your second cup of coffee. Okay, so it's all done exporting. So we're basically all done. Um, in this next quick video, I'm gonna show you how to print your IBT tray, or at least how I like to do it.